Hey, what's up guys? Welcome to a brand new tutorial. You guys have taken me all the way to 5,000 subscribers and I really can't tell you guys how grateful I am for this. I'm excited, I'm ecstatic. Thank you so much. I really appreciate this. I'll make uh, another video where I'm just gonna thank you guys for taking me to 5K and also tell you guys the different changes we'll be making to the channel like live retouching sessions and all that stuff. Hopefully I'll make that video. But yeah, um, this is just a video saying thank you for 5k subscribers and for that we're going to learn how to clean your seamless backdrop in post now this image has been retouched already it didn't do much this is the before and this is the after so now i'm just going to put all this merge it together that's command e to merge all your um, layers together i'm just going to do that again so basically i'll select both using command or control on pc command or mac control on pc and command on mac control on pc e command e control e whatever system you're using, just merge them together. And now that I've done this, I'm now going to do frequency separation. Now I know, I know, I do frequency separation a lot, but it works really well most times to help, you know, battle um, these kind of situations. Now, the reason is because you don't want your backdrop to just look flat without texture, you know, it just looks soft. So you want to separate your textures most times from your, um, from the tones of the backdrop, from the color. So before we do that though, I'm going to clean up the backdrop a little bit. So I'm just going to pick my lasso tool, um, select this area right here, my feather, leave it at zero pixel, then fill, content aware, and okay. You guys can see that, it's taking that off. Now, there's a reason why I leave my feather on zero. If it's on one, it's going to leave a small black mark here or if, the background was black and um, whatever I was trying to take out the background was white and was at the edge. It's going to leave a small white edge um, line at the edge and I don't want that. So now that I've gone out of the way, I'm just going to use my lasso tool to just clean up some places. Um, like right here, just take this out. So then my contents, I'll change the content that we're blend, blending. The mode is normal opacity 100. Just going to take that out. Then this color right here, I don't really like it. So fill and I'll take that out too. So yeah, I think, yeah, I think for the most part we're good. So now that I'm going down to the way, I'll just come to frequency separation. Now, if you do not have frequency separation actions and you want the exact ones I'm using, go to FX Radar, um, FX radar come I'll put the link in the description below. That's where I downloaded my actions that I'm using from. If you want to create your own actions too, there are a lot of videos that will teach you how to create your frequency separation actions. They're not really hard, but it just helps you work efficiently. Now, don't get that wrong. It does not improve your retouching. It will just help you work efficiently. So yeah, um, for this particular video, I use the simple frequency separation. Um, probably set my radius to about five. It just depends on you. Uh, click OK. Now that I've done that, I've separated my textures or most of my textures from the colors of my subject or from whatever I'm doing. So now duplicate my low layer um, so you can just come here and um, duplicate layer okay or you can just control or command j and it duplicates the layer for you then i'll go to filter blur surface blur and just looking at my backdrop you can see how clean the backdrop is already from just this little that i've done now the, this um, this works for me perfectly or these values here work for me perfectly so it depends on you as a person you um, or it depends on the subject or the background that you're cleaning you might have to go higher or lower but just make sure you work, watch out for the edges once the edges start getting really blurry then you really want to stop at that point the, the whole idea of this is that it cleans everything and it maintains the edges of your subject so wherever a sees an edge it tries to maintain the edge of the subject now i'm not some technical photoshopper or photographer but um, i'm just trying to explain as best as i can so you guys would understand what i am doing now uh as you guys can see the background is extremely clean if i zoom in here now the the, the good thing about this is that it somehow retains the shadows too for your background so um other techniques will probably just wipe out the whole shadows just make the background look extremely white and clean but if you look at this it maintains the shadows that um that were created during the shoot making it look you know a lot more um realistic so uh, my radius here uh is 63 
and my threshold is 25. So I'll click OK. Now, there are some times that it depends on how fast your PC you know, is because um, the surface blow um, filter sometimes can be very um, heavy. But um, my PC, I guess, is OK, moderately fast, <laughs> not extremely, but yeah, I, I wish it was a lot faster than this, but moderately fast. Now, once we're going to this point, sometimes there might be a lot more patches than you want. You just probably use your mixer brush to fix that. Um, I, can't, I can't really see a lot of patches here. I'm just zooming um, that I would like to take out. But in case there is, I'll probably just use my mixer brush to fix it on the second frequency separation. That's the copy of the one we created. So now that I've gotten this out of the way, all you have to do is create a mask. Now, white reveals and black hides. So you look at your mask here. Um, if it's white, then it's revealing what's on this layer. If it's black, then it's going to hide. So the way to do it is click your mask. Make sure your mask is selected and command I or control I on PC. Invert your mask. And once you've inverted it, all you have to do is pick a brush, set your flow to 100, set your opacity to 100, hardness to 0, and um, increase your brush size to um, your brush, your preferred size, and just brush over this. Just brush over this. Just be careful about the edges so you don't get the shoes or his trousers. And well, this is not a great job, but that's a pretty decent job. Could be worse, <laughs> I guess, but it's a pretty decent job. So now that we've gotten this out of the way, as you can see, we still have our shadows intact and everything. Like I said, if you have a problem with how smudgy it looks you can always use your mixer brush tool to you know just blend oh sorry <laughs> just pick your mixer brush tool okay picked it you can just use your mixer brush tool to just blend the shadows in just you know a little more and yeah and it will look it'll look better so this is our before and this is after this is our before, this is our after, before, after. Now, if you zoom in, you can still see some textures from the Z. And this is the point where we'll go to the high frequency layer. We'll pick our clone stamp tool, make sure um, we're on current layer. And all you have to do is sample from, you know, the clean part of your background. It really does not have to be precise and just paint. Sample and paint. So you just paint the textures from up here back into this. Yeah. And you just keep painting. It might not be, you know, the fastest way to get this done, but it's pretty efficient and makes your backdrop pretty clean and, and, and nice. Just make sure you avoid your your subject. So let's say we're done here now because we're not trying to waste your time as usual. We're just trying to make sure everything is neat and nice. So let's say we're done here now. Let me zoom in, show you guys my before and my after. So before, after, and the background looks neat. So thank you so much for watching today's tutorial. If you really like this, please do not forget to give me a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed to my channel, please subscribe to my channel and turn on the notification button so that you can receive notifications every time I put up a new video. And if this helped you in any way, comment below, let me know, and I'll see you guys in another video pretty soon. Thank you so much for taking me all the way to 5K. I really appreciate it. Never thought I'd make it 5K on YouTube, but here I am. Thank you so much, and I'll see you guys 
in the next video. Peace.